Now that we have our basic font set up, let's go ahead and start setting up the page header. This is going to be the thing that creates a visual introduction that has an impact. First step is that we want to create a new section with an ID called page header. Okay, and inside of that, we want to add a header tag in it that also has an H1 and an H2 branding tagline. Okay, so let's go ahead and do that really fast. So I'm going to jump back to Komodo Edit, and I'm going to visit the section that's right here. And, well, we already have an H1 and an H2 in there, so um, what we could do is, for right now, let's just remove the article, because we're not going to have an article in the main introduction. Let's just get rid of that. What we're going to have in the beginning is we're just going to have something that's got our name and like a little tagline. So let's type that in. And here's where, actually what I can do is I can just go ahead and take this, the Jane Doe part, let's copy that. And I'm going to take this, I'm going to copy this, and I'm going to put it in the H2. And actually, I want to get rid of the and, and I want to put an ampersand there, because I think it would look a little bit nicer. To do that, you always start with an ampersand, and the very last character is going to be a semicolon. And everything in between those two characters are going to be the letters that tell you which HTML entity you're going to use. Well, this is a little confusing because you might look at this and go, well, that is an ampersand. Well, you don't want to put a real ampersand in the code view because other character encodings might not be able to read that. So what we're going to do is we're going to put AMP in between the ampersand and the semicolon. And this full thing right here ends up being the HTML entity that represents an ampersand. Okay, so let's go ahead and I'm going to save this and we can just take a quick peek at the way that looks. Let's just go back here. We'll test it. And now <clears throat> you can see what's happening is that we've got something that's like pretty basic. All right. And what eventually, if you remember what we're going to do, is we're going to end up having that centered and with a background image and so forth. And uh, let's let's take a really quick peek at where we are in our discussion about it. So uh, we just created our header with the taglines and the H1. Now we need to decide on how you want the dimension of the header to work. Well, for this demonstration, I'm going to do something that's kind of impactful where it goes full viewport. Okay, so however big you have your viewport open, that's how big the thing is going to end up being. So let's just take a, a quick preview as a reminder of how that's supposed to look. So here's the example that I'm using. And you see that whenever we first come into the page, in fact, if I just go up here and I click on the URL, hit enter again, this is how it's going to end up loading. All right. And no matter what I do, no matter how big I make it, it looks like it's one single page. But what's kind of cool is that there's more content down below it. Okay, um, And there are some different things that you can do to kind of indicate, you know, that people are supposed to scroll down. And that's up to you. Uh, you know, you may have seen websites where it has like a little arrow down at the bottom where you click on it or it tells you to scroll. It's like, you know, explicitly telling you to scroll. I personally don't care for those. I feel like if it is not intuitive enough, then maybe you shouldn't be doing it. And I think that this ends up being a nice intro. And then if people don't choose to scroll, then there's a menu button that is pretty um, understandable. So most people will understand that if they see menu, oh, okay, I'm going to go click on that. You could also call it something besides menu, call it navigation or something like that. But most people, studies have shown, understand menu. You might have also, we've discussed before, seen the little hamburger icon where it's three uh, horizontal lines. People refer to it as a hamburger icon. Those are not intuitive, believe it or not. Even though we see them everywhere, they're not necessarily intuitive. And the word menu is the most intuitive. And menu with a border around it and m making it look like a button is absolutely the most intuitive to use. So if someone clicks on this and they click and they go down, then that becomes really clear what's supposed to happen on the page. So no matter what size 
this is going to stay centered, uh, this being the H1 and H2, and we're going to have this um, background image that is able to go full screen no matter how big the screen dimension is. We have to have uh, something that will load within a reasonable amount of time, but that can also maintain its quality, so you kind of have to make that balance too. So that's one of those things that we're going to have to figure out as well. Okay, so this is where we were uh, in our discussion. So we decided on how we want the dimensions to work. We haven't set them up yet, but we've decided on how we want it to work. Now we need to set that background image. That means that you have to go and figure out what kind of image you want. And this is something, remember, that's going to represent your personality. It's going to represent who you are professionally. So you know, that's something to really think about. Maybe you even have, uh, maybe if you're an illustrator or something, you have a nice illustration that you could use. If it's vector art, you can turn it into uh, an SVG, something like that that's going to scale really well. So really that's kind of up to you. Okay, now the other thing that we're going to do, we are going to create another simple section below the page header and just put something in it just so we can see how it'll interact with the screen. And I think that one thing I, I didn't do whenever you know we went to go create the, the section for page header is I think that we didn't actually give it an ID called page header and that's one of the first things I told you to do. So let's, uh, let's revisit that and make sure that that is done. Okay, so yeah, in fact, you see here where I have um, section, I need to tell it to have an ID of page dash header. Okay, oops, I've got all caps on. How about that? Let's fix that up. There we go. Okay, so now we have our page header. The next thing that we want to do right down below, we said, is go ahead and create another section just so that we can see whenever we're doing our CSS how things are going to interact with it. So let's just put this is another section. Okay, and we'll save this. Now, this looks fine. Um, what we really need to do at this point is we need to go ahead and uh, set up the CSS because, like like I said before, it's not going to look like much of anything looks like that. And we want it to look like that, okay, where we've got some stuff down below. Okay, so let's go ahead and uh, jump over to our CSS. So I'm jumping back to the CSS, and I open this up a little bit more so... Uh, that we have more room in the CSS panel. And I'm just going to paste again so you don't have to watch me type, but we're going to discuss what, what's happening. Okay, so starting right here, right, with the section, um, the first thing I did was I'm going to make the sections red. And you'll see that not all the sections are going to be red because we're going to fix that. But we're making it red because I want this section down below, the generic section right now, just to be very obvious so that I can see very easily if it's showing up or not um, properly. Okay, now, and then of course the color, the text color is going to be white so we can read it. And then this one, okay, this is the rule for the page header. And the way that I have it written is so that it is uh, the section whose ID is page header, and that corresponds to this. Okay, and remember there's no space in between because it is, a page header is assigned to the section, it's not uh, a child of the section. Okay, so first thing um, we haven't really discussed before is um, this viewport height, this VH. It's a unit of measure, it's uh, good for HTML5 and modern browsers, and uh, if we do 100, it's like saying 100% but it's not the same as 100% because if I were to say height equals 100%, it wouldn't do what I want it to do. So we're going to say 100 VH. And I put a little comment out here to remind you that the viewport height is VH. And what that is going to allow us is uh, it's going to allow us that it will always take up 100% this particular element, this page header section, will always take up 100% whenever it's visible of the um, of the height. Okay, so then we're going to have a width of 100%. So basically, that makes it full viewport. Okay, and for the background, I'm making the background just a just a gray color for right now. And the other thing that I'm going to do is I already have an image chosen. 
and it's the one that I have uh, called Arial.jpg. And I'm going to go ahead and uh, place that image in that folder uh, in just a moment, and I'll show you that. But then uh, I want to tell it not to repeat, and I'm centering it and centering it so that it's centered vertically and horizon horizontally. And then I'm also doing a background size of cover. We've done that before, and you remember back to uh, our images exercise, so that it will cover the entire um, section element. And the color of the text is going to be black. And here, this is the thing that is kind of a tricky thing right here, where it says display table. This is important. Like, so far what we've dealt with in the class is like display none and display inline, display block. Well, there's also something called table. We haven't really uh, used tables in this class um, unless you had a need to use it and you used it on your own. Uh, a table is something that used to be used all the time for presentation purposes, but you're really not supposed to use it just for layout. So um, it's really for tabular data, you know, like in a chart or something where you've got things that have to be cross-referenced to really understand the, the value of the data. Well, we're going to display it as if it was a table because table cells have the ability to do vertical centering. And it's very difficult to do vertical centering when you don't know the height of the parent. So, um, and you you know you can't set it in pixels, all right? This is set in VH. It's not set. All right, this just trust me. All right, so we're going to set this as a display table, okay? And then down here, we're going to tell the header to have some set of rules. All right, so it's going to be this header that is corresponding, that's holding the H1 and H2. We're going to tell it to be 100%, and um, the text align is going to be centered, so we don't have to worry about it being, uh, you know, having auto margins or anything like that, and setting it display block and all that stuff. So we're just going to tell it to be 100% width and text align center. And here's the, the part that uh, helps us center it vertically. Okay, so we're going to tell this one to have a display type of table cell. Okay, and I tell you in this little note that that's important because it sets the child, this is the child, this header is the child of the page header section. Okay, so it sets the child to display like a table cell for vertical centering. And then we actually tell it to have a vertical alignment. So you say vertical align middle. And again, this is also important, okay, because it vertically centers the text in the table cell regardless of the parent resizing. So let's go ahead and save this and let's do a test. All right, so we don't have our background image because I didn't put it in the folder yet. So as soon as I do that, you'll have a background image, but see what's happening. It's giving me a vertical alignment of center. Okay, so let's fix that. Let's go ahead and place our background image. So I'm going to go to my desktop, and I have this picture called Arial.jpg, and I'm going to copy it, and I'm going to go into my Exercise 5 folder that I'm working with, and into Images, and I'm going to paste that there. Okay, and now if I hit Refresh um, on my page, I should get this. And now you see what happens no matter what I do. It's centering this. And then if you look down, if I scroll, this is that red thing where it says this is another section. And that's why I wanted to make it red. I wanted it to be super obvious. So this is working. Whenever I first go to my page and I scroll to the top, resize, do all this stuff, I don't see that bottom section until I choose to scroll. Okay. So now the, uh, the next thing that we're going to probably want to deal with is getting this to look like that. So I'm going to go back to the CSS and again I'm going to paste so that you don't have to watch me type and this is what I did lines uh, 36 through 45. So I'm what I'm doing is I'm creating special h1 and h2 rules that are specific to the page header 
header elements, okay? Because I don't want this to cascade through to all of the H1s and H2s. I don't want all of them to be all uppercase and everything. So uh, you can take a look at this and kind of see what's happening. And the other thing too is um, for this, this H2, I want it to be a little bit more delicate because I'm also going to make it uppercase for this font. This is about the right thing to make it justified. So I'm going to save that and we're going to come over here and do a preview and that looks pretty good. Okay, so uh, I think uh, we're ready to move on then to the next demo.